Hey, welcome. All right, so you have a battery that ends up dead on your vehicle, maybe overnight, or maybe it only takes a couple of days type of thing. And the battery itself has been replaced maybe. You know that the battery is good. It tested out just fine. You know that the starter and the alternator, that they're both okay. They're not causing any issues for you. What you're looking for is how to figure out maybe how to determine what is draining down that battery. This is called a parasitic draw. And just like any other parasite, a parasitic draw is draining current from the battery when the vehicle is supposed to be off and not doing anything at all. Your battery should last uh, quite a while. Um, it's going to depend on the vehicle and the reserve capacity of the battery, but realistically, this 2000 Corvette behind me should probably still start up after it's been sitting for two weeks. I can't even let it sit overnight right now and uh, without the battery going dead, okay? We have to jump start it basically every time the customer wants to drive the vehicle at this point. So um, the vehicle itself for this test doesn't really matter. You guys can apply this testing to any parasitic draw test. So the first thing that we have to do is we have to determine if there actually is a parasitic draw. And what this is going to require is a meter that's able to read amperage, okay? And what we're going to do is we're going to take our meter and we're going to insert it into the system. And what this means is we're going to run the meter in series with the battery cable. So we're going to take and disconnect the battery cable from the negative and the cable itself. We're going to attach one meter lead to the battery negative, one to the battery cable itself. And now our meter is in the middle. So all of the current leaving the battery is going to be measured through our meter. Now be careful here because most meters only have a 10 amp fuse, okay? And if you do something as simple as opening the door, it could wake up a bunch of modules, turn on a bunch of lights, and pop, there goes the fuse. So you can see here, I have the vehicle all prepared for a parasitic draw test. And what that means is I've opened all of the doors, the trunk, the hood, and I've manually tripped all of the latches. So right now, as it sits, the vehicle thinks that all of the doors, hood, and trunk are closed when in all reality, I have them open for ease of access to different pieces and components on here, okay? So always do this because you don't wanna open a door when your meter is tied in series to the system. So this vehicle here is reading 525-ish milliamps of a draw. That is half of an amp of draw. Is that good or bad? Well, I've already told you that this car ends up dead overnight. So we know that 500 milliamps is bad. The specification or rule of thumb here that you want to be looking for is under 50, 50, 50 milliamps. Okay, that's a tiny, tiny number. To put that into context for you guys, a glove box light or something like that may take about 250 to 500 milliamps. Okay, we're looking for 50. It's incredibly small. So we have uh, roughly 10 times the spec right now, and that's why this battery is dying overnight. So what do you do next? We know we have a parasitic draw. We know we have something killing this battery. But how do you determine what it is? Well, first thing first, do a visual inspection. Make sure that there's no lights on. When you're dealing with a half an amp draw, there could very easily be a light left on somewhere. Make sure that there's no lights on. That's the simplest thing to do. But the next step is going to be figuring out what fuse is feeding power basically to which component that's staying on. So we have a fuse box under the hood here, which I've already checked. And we have a fuse box under the passenger side of the dash behind the tow kick on here. And I'm gonna show you guys a really good way to test the system without waking anything up, without causing a disruption within the system. Because the worst thing you can do is pull a fuse and see if the draw went away and then put the fuse back in. Because now you've potentially just woken up a whole bunch of things and you've caused your draw to actually go up. Here, let me show you. So we're at 520 or so right now. Let me pull this fuse and it should go down. Great, it probably went down there and we reinstall it. And if we look at the meter again now, we're at 955. So we went from 500 to almost one amp of total draw. Now we have to wait for the system to go back to sleep. We have to wait for it to go back into that mode that it was before, which some vehicles can take 30 seconds, some vehicles can take 30 minutes, who knows? Depends on what modules you wake up and what the protocol is, the procedure is for them to go to sleep. So you can see here in just the 10 seconds I've been talking, the vehicle's gone back to its, uh, its original position here at about 500 and, it's actually at 590 milliamps right now, so we're still a little bit higher than we were, but it didn't take long to get back to that point. So 
What should you do if you don't pull fuses and reinstall them? What should you do? Well, if you're fortunate enough to have two multimeters, one to sit on here and read the amperage, and another to read voltage, you can perform this test really easily. If you only have one multimeter, you can reconnect your whole battery system, leave the car sit for 10 or 15 minutes or whatever it took to go into sleep mode originally, and then you can start poking around with the multimeter, finding out a voltage drop across the fuses. So what does that mean? Well, if there is current flowing through the system, there's gonna be voltage drop across the fuse because there's no such thing as a perfect fuse. A fuse will always have a tiny amount of resistance and we flow current through that tiny amount of resistance, we're gonna drop voltage across there. And now we're talking a minuscule, tiny, minuscule amount, uh, maybe two to four to maybe up to 10-ish millivolts across that fuse. That is a tiny, minuscule amount, but it's higher than zero. Anything higher than zero is telling us that we have current flowing through that fuse at that point. If it's zero, we know we have no current flow. That fuse could be very high resistance, but because there's no current flowing through that system at this point, the fuse will read 0 0.00000. As soon as we flow current through there, a tiny amount of resistance will act up and it'll give us a voltage output reading. So what does that actually look like in practice? Here, let me show you. Okay, so you can see here we have our multimeter set on DC voltage. If you have an auto ranging multimeter, great. If you have a manual ranging multimeter, make sure you're looking at the smallest possible value that you can. You can see here we have three decimal places after zero. What we're looking for here is an incredibly small voltage reading. So I have my two probes here, and what I'm gonna actually do is probe each of these spots on the fuses. So there's the little metal tabs on the top of each of these fuses. So I'll take one lead there, and one lead on the other tab, and it should read 0 0.000 all day long. That means we have no current currently, no current currently, current currently, <laughs> we have no current flowing through this fuse at this time. So what we'll do is we'll check each of these fuses, and I'm not gonna bore you guys with going through every fuse in this fuse box, but this 10 amp fuse right here is our problem child. See that? Three millivolts a voltage drop across that fuse, but any voltage drop across that fuse means there's current flowing across that fuse at this point. So looking at the fuse cover here, this is fuse number four, that is for the SCM-L. Gotta love acronyms on a fuse box, but doing a little bit of quick digging here, this is for the driver's side seat module. So looking at a wiring diagram here, you can see that this SCM-L fuse, this 10 amp fuse, is powering up our driver's side seat module. So we're not, um, we're not controlling the powertrain control module or body control module or any sort of critical system with this. So I'm gonna go ahead and pull this fuse and see what happens to our draw. So right here, our 10 amp fuse, fuse number four on this car. Pull that guy out and what does our draw do? Oh wow, instantly we are down to 20, 17 to 22, um, definitely under 25 milliamps here. That's half of what our rule of thumb or our specification was. And to me, that's really what I wanna be, what I wanna be seeing on a car like this. So right now this battery won't end up dead. So next step would be get the battery all charged up and, um, determine what the customer wants to do with this. So driver's side seat module, um, this is a power memory seat on a 2000 Corvette. So chances are that assembly is gonna be rather pricey. It's really up to the customer at this point to figure out what he wants to do. Does he want to dig in further on this system or does he wanna simply pull the fuse out and, and let the seat uh, sit in its position where it is anyway? So. Uh, maybe, depending on if he wants to go further, maybe there'll be another video coming up here on diagnosing the driver's seat um, causing a parasitic draw. But I just wanted to get you guys to understand how to perform a parasitic draw test and how to do it efficiently so you're not pulling and replacing fuses and waking systems up and causing a lot of problems. Voltage drop across the fuse is gonna be your quickest, fastest way to do it 
So I really appreciate it, guys. Make sure you subscribe to the channel if you have not already. Click on that little bell icon there. That way you can get a notification with uh, every video that we come out with. So really appreciate you guys being there. Thank you so much. And as always, happy wrenching, everyone. Thank you. Mm -hmm.